I'm Catherine Mwangi and we now have the privilege of having a conversation with Miss Caroline Odera, who's an entrepreneur in the Lake region, specifically in Kisumu where we are, and she works with various entrepreneurs here, as well as her work with women and girls. We'll get to learn more about that through her organization, Wise Hub. Karibu sana to the program. Thanks for having me. And we are twinning. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a like good thing. <laughs> telepathy, eh? So this yeah. is bound to be a great conversation. It is, yeah. So, Caroline, mm. born bred here? Yes, I am born and bred in, in Kisumu. Okay. Yeah. What was your upbringing like, your parents? Well, so I grew up in Obunga. So one of the slum areas in Kisumu. Oh, in the slum? So everyone knows Obunga. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, so the, that's where I grew up. Okay. Yeah. What was your, uh, why were you in the slum? Was it like a... a well, that's how, that's, that's how I found myself in the slum. Uh -huh. So I, I was born in the slum area. Is it? Yeah. Siblings? Yeah, yeah so we, we, were, we were actually supposed to be seven, seven in our family. Uh -huh. So right now we are five. We okay. lost two. Oh, holy. <laughs> yeah, holy. so we are five. So but what I'm the first born. Yeah, the first. I'm the first born in a family of five. Uh, of seven? Of, yeah, of seven. Yeah. yeah. How old is your last born? Well, our last one is like 20, 28. Ah, yeah. so you are very, very close yeah, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were like, we, were, we had a gap like one year, two years. <laughs> yeah. Okay, what was life like growing up uh, in the slum areas? So we grew up in, in a, in a, in a one, one bedroom house. Yeah. So there was living room yeah. and one bedroom? Yeah, it was a one bedroom house. In for the all the seven kids so and your parents? For all the seven. No, we lost two. So, so my firstborn was, I, I didn't see my first, our firstborn. Uh-huh. Yeah, so I, I, I even didn't see our lastborn. Uh -huh. So we were only five. So uh -huh. I, um, I, grew up, uh, I grew up as the only firstborn in, in, wow. in, in my family. Okay. So I only go to see the five of us. Okay. Yeah. So what was living in those conditions like? Yeah, so well, Obunga, Obunga then was like Obunga, the real slum areas. So you know, the, the, the shanties, mm. you know. Um, my mom used to be, used to be to, I mean, to do a business in Obunga. Okay. So she used to fry, she used to fry fish okay. in Obunga. Uh -huh. uh, the so-called Mgongo <laughs> What's Mgongo so, so you know, so like the fish and then they, they, they remove the, uh, the upscale. Okay. Yeah, uh -huh. so that's the, the bone area. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's called what? The skeleton. Yeah. So that's the Mgongo thing. Uh -huh. Yeah. So she would fry that and sell it around. Yeah, and then I went to a primary school. So you need, you know, as the firstborn, you you are uh, uh, almost guarded. <laughs> yes, and everyone yeah, looks because, up to you. Yeah, yeah, because you know, life in Obunga, you know, there are many. I mean, uh, there are many things that, that goes on. So there, are, there are issues of of, um, of uh, of women getting into what, into. Um, prostitution? Prostitution, yes, yeah. Yes, yes. Um, so, yeah, so I, I was guarded. So I went to uh, um, a primary school. In, okay. I mean, um, I went to a mission school in, in Kisumu. Were you raised by a single mom? No, not really. Two so my parents. dad so okay. my dad passed, passed on around uh, in 20, 2000, 2000, 2003, there, thereabout. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. and then it was just your mom? Yes, it was just my mom then up to now. <laughs> wow, that's yeah. amazing. So she raised all of you kids yeah, by herself? She raised, yeah, she raised all of us by, by herself. Yeah. Yeah. And you going to school, what was that like? Yeah, so I went to school in St. Rita's Primary. That, that was a mission school. Mm -hmm. It was a Catholic school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was St. Rita's Girls Primary School in Kisumu. A day uh, school? A day school, yes. But then secondary school, I went to St. Rita's Girls Secondary School okay. in, in Kisumu. Uh -huh. Yeah. What was the education experience like? They were all girls' school. Yeah, so that, that means I was guarded because they didn't want to spoil me. Mm. <laughs> so I went to girls' school in, uh, in primary school and, and then secondary school also girls' okay. school. Okay. Yeah. So when you were there? So when I was in primary school, yeah. I was actually the smallest. Uh -huh. <laughs> so the smallest my, in Yeah, size. Yeah, so my schoolmates call me, call me Carol Small. <laughs> Because I was, I was tiny. Yeah, I was so tiny. Yeah, yeah. Like I finished primary school with, when I was uh, when 12, 13 years old. From from my primary school, they called me Kiliti, so the the <laughs> tiny what? Uh -huh. I mean, the tiny girl. Uh -huh. And then going to secondary school, they called me Caro Small. Okay. So yeah, so I had all the small names. So you've been small since yes, you were yes. born. But now I'm grown up. <laughs> <laughs> but you're still small. It's fine. Oh, yeah. You own the title. Own the title. Oh yeah, yes, I own it. <laughs> Okay, yeah. so what dreams did you have 
uh, when you're in high school, especially for your life, and what did you hope to change? When I was in high school, I wanted to become a lawyer. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so at that time, there were there were issues of going to from five and six in Uganda. Uh -huh. Yeah, because my, my dad was still alive. Mm. So when I was sitting into form four, so that's when I lost my dad. How did that affect you? It, it affected my performance greatly. Yes, ah. because I had I had aspirations to go to form six in Uganda. Yes. But that didn't happen. Couldn't happen. Yeah. Uh-huh. So you wanted to be a lawyer? Yes. So your dad passed on and then you had to shelf that dream? Yes. Okay. Yeah, but my mom did business, like I said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did business uh, as from when I was in primary school okay. till, till when, uh, when I finished. So still when I, I was growing up. Uh -huh. Yeah, so my, my mom actually made me to become an entrepreneur. Ah, yeah. you had an example right at home. Yes, 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 yes. You know, because when you're the firstborn, so when you're from school, you always come to assist with your parents. So I could come home during my, my break time and during the weekends I could assist my, my mom yeah. in selling the fish. Yeah, so I, 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 I mean mm. my entrepreneurial spirit just started from where yes. when I, I started a long time ago when yes. I was still growing. Yeah. Helping your mother. Yes. So all things somehow just worked for good. Yes. Uh, in your life where that is concerned. Well, yeah, yes. Yeah? Yeah. So what happened then to you after high school? Yeah, so after high school, um, yeah, so I, I talked to my mom and mm -hmm. I, I, I did computer studies. So my mom, my mom paid, paid for it. Yeah. Yeah, so I took that for like, I think, two, three months because I had all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then after that, I was like, what do I do next? Yeah. 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 So I met a friend of mine. So at that time, that so that friend of mine was a friend to my dad. So my, my dad had, had passed on. Mm. So yeah, he was left to you know to take custody of us, of yes. myself and our family. Yeah. Yeah. So I met friend of mine, a friend of mine. Yeah. So she told me there there was some volunteer work. Yeah. So some some youth group in Kisumu that does volunteer work. Okay. So what did volunteering entail? Oh yeah, so uh, so to be as a volunteer, so I mean, so first of all, we never used to be paid. So you just used to go there, volunteer your skills, do something. Yeah, so it was most of budding. Yeah, so you know, so you're from school and you're like, what is budding? So yeah, so I went. Uh, I mean, I went. I went to wildlife clubs, mm -hmm. and then we were supposed to do. I mean, so we get some students because wildlife club is, is like. I mean, working with students, and then the students goes to Impala Park. So it was our environmental conservation group. Yeah. Yeah. And then for the, the, the youth group, they used to do birding. So when the visitors came, the visitors would come, they, the visitors would want, would want to see birds in Kisumu. Uh -huh. So they would want to take them around to see birds, to a guiding basically. Okay, so yeah. but you had to be taught about birds. Yeah, so there, there were books there, so I could read myself. Uh -huh. I could read in the internet. You know, now I knew computer. Uh -huh. So I could search around the, the internet, yeah. learn, learn about birds. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, sometimes we get trainings from the people who are past, past uh, I mean, came before us, mm -hmm. so they could train us. Yeah, so I learned a lot. Wow. Yeah. So at this time, are you still helping out with the family business? Yes, yes. So I, I'm still in, in Obunga, uh -huh. so I didn't want to stay to stay so much in Obunga, <coughs> but I would want to be in town. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it, it was a balance. So mm -hmm. I would come vol volunteer in town, but I could stay, still, still stay in Obunga. Go back home in Obunga. Go back in Obunga. So mm -hmm. most people, people, people didn't know me in Obunga ah. because they would see me going to town. Sometimes like, I come back, so the, the, they were like, do you, still stay, do you stay in Obunga? Yeah. So, yeah, so most of the time I, I tell people that I stay in Obunga, they're like, no, you don't stay in sure. Obunga. I look like a cool kid because... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like a yeah. cool kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So that was my life. I, 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 I spend my, most of my time volunteering, mm -hmm. but sometimes times I go to, I mean, in the evening I go back to home. Yes. Yeah. And all this time, are your siblings in school or? Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. So that time my, my siblings are, are still in, pre, uh, in, in primary school and in high school. I mean, in primary school mm -hmm. mostly, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. because at that, at that time I was I was the only one who finished my primary school. So at what point did the breakthrough come for you? So when I was I was volunteering at um, Sunset Bad, Sunset Badas, yeah. Mm -hmm. So then most of the time I used to be the on, the only girl. Most of the most of uh, the people I work with were men. Yeah. So most of the time I was the, the only girl. The, that that was scary for me. Because, mm -hmm. So most of the girls uh, they came they dropped. So I was the only one who kept, you know, consistent. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I was like, maybe because of the job, the nature of the job, because not many, many women were into to a guiding and yes. bird washing and yes. stuff. 
yeah. <laughs> yeah so i kept I, I i mean i kept i i i i kept on being consi consistent yeah at some point then we stopped doing but the, then the group was uh, doing a lot of projects on conservation so they wrote a lot of projects then they put me uh, as the only girl that was remaining they put me as the as the, as the in one of the committees in in one of the management committee mm -hmm. so it was like uh, a project assistant at, at that point i could get some pay a little pay yeah so there was some a little pay at the sunset borders but mm. i could also get some pay from the wildlife clubs of kenya okay uh, i mean so we do, did a lot of catering for yeah. the for the teachers they had uh, some projects working with teachers in in the lake region yeah at the wildlife clubs that's when i uh, that's when I, tr I i learned a lot in terms of catering by the way, I have a hotel, so that's where I learned my catering business. <laughs> oh, you have a hotel? Yes, yes. Nice. Yeah, so I, I learned a lot about catering at Wildlife because we used to cater for a lot of teachers, but also, I mean, we had a project that time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so fast forward. Mm -hmm. um, no, before you fast forward, so yeah. when you started earning some little money from... Yeah, so when I started earning <coughs> some money, that's when I started, I paid for my school fees because ah. I told you I spent five years before going yes. to, to, I mean, to college or, yes. or, or university. Uh -huh. So I, I saved some, some money, then I paid for my, I started going to Kim. I started my, my, uh, my college at Kim, Kenya Institute of Management. Yes. So I could save some money and go to Kim. How did it feel having money? Your I mean, it's, it's so nice, but it's so, I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's uh, as, as, as a firstborn, you know, as a firstborn and you're the only girl and yeah. you're like, why, why am I paying for my fees while people are paying? For, I mean, people have parents who are supposed to pay for their fees. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it was that unfortunate. But your parent, you were helping out your mom. Oh, yeah, because he wasn't able to pay at that yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I, I saved some money and went to school, uh -huh. but I kept on doing my work. So when I, I mean, still at, at Lake Victoria St. St. Badas, I was in, into a lot of en environmental what, organizations, mm -hmm. conservation. So I used to be called in a lot of workshops, you know. So I'm the only girl. So every time there's a girl, people, you know, they think about you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So then um, I, I remember when I, that was in 20, when was it? 20, 2014? What did you study at Kim? I studied business, business uh -huh. management, all through. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I studied, I, I studied business management. Uh -huh. So when I was, that was 2010, there, yeah. there about, but I was, I was still volunteering at Sunset Badders, mm -hmm. but also doing mm. Kim, doing, uh, uh, studying at Kim. Yes. So, um, and there you paid are, your own fees. I paid my own fees. So there was an, an opportunity that, yeah. um, uh, at that time, in 2010, that wanted a, a, a girl a youth in yes, Kisumu yes. to go and represent the region, uh, you know, in the states, yeah. And then, hmm. yeah. And then what wow. happened? Yes, that what happened is one of the organizations in Kisumu. They they just recognized me. They they th they th thought about me because they they only see me. It's the only girl they see. Yeah, they only see the... me in the workshops. Yes. In, in the in the region, yes. you know. Yeah. So I mean, so uh, I was supposed to go to. Uh, to New York. <laughs> yeah, my first travel to New York. I didn't have my passport. I didn't have my birth. I only had my birth certificate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> At that time. So yeah, so I, I had to look for my passport, which I got in like three days. Oh, wow. Yeah, but I had my ID and my birth certificate. What, what was going through your mind imagining <laughs> that you're going to be on a flight the first time I was like, ever <laughs> in a new country? You know, you know, you're from Obunga. You haven't gone out, you know? And then you're going to take your first flight, and then you hadn't even have a passport because oh having goodness. a passport is a privilege. It's not even a, a I mean, I'm told it's a privilege. Mm. You know, it's not something <laughs> that everyone has. Yeah, so I got my passport. Uh, in like one week, I got my passport, and then my, my travel was also booked in, in one week. Then I traveled to this. And what were you going to do in New York? Oh, yeah, so, so there was a conference. There was a conference. That was a, it. Go, it was called a CSD, mm -hmm. CSD. You you uh, went for CSD mm -hmm. seventeen, yeah. And they picked you because it, uh, because I was the youth that was talking about environment stuff in the region. So I was supposed to talk about environment stuff in the Lake region. My goodness, yeah, yes. what an honor! Oh yeah, it how was did your mom honor. feel? Oh yeah. So yeah. So wait. So okay. <laughs> So when I went, uh, I mean, so when I traveled, it was supposed, it was three weeks traveling. Okay. I, I, wow. I traveled for three weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but before that, we've had some issues uh, 
at Obonga where I stay, I, I used to stay, mm -hmm. uh, because at that, that time uh, we couldn't afford our rent. Okay. Yeah, for like one year, I think. Okay. At that time, it was uh, rent was like two thousand, three thousand thereabout. Uh -huh. So we spent a, like a year without my mom paying paying rent because he wasn't able to. Because yeah. at that time, I think the uh, the fish business had already started going down. Mm. Yeah, because it wasn't like Kitambo Sana, so it had it 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 it, it has started going down. Yeah. So there was no much. Yeah. So my mom couldn't actually pay, and even my dad had passed on. Yeah. Yeah. So then when um so the, when I got this opportunity it was is is it was a, like a relief for me because so when I went to the U.S. then my first um <laughs> so then uh, what happened it, it is like I got paid. Uh, was it seven hundred dollars, thousand? Mm -hmm. My first time to get dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. So um. Yeah. So I got dollars, and I was like, "What am I going to do with these dollars?" Yes. You know. Yeah. So yeah. So life in, in New York is expensive. Yeah. You know? So I I used to eat, and then I I used to translate that into Kenyan Kenyan shillings. <laughs> Because it's, I mean, they, it's too much. Yeah. Like fifteen, fifteen dollars for for a bill is like it's yeah. like a lot of money here. Mm -hmm. So I could save. I could like you know save. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah. So because I knew the problem, the problem we, we had at home, yeah. So when I came back, I had some money saved. So then I I paid that the, uh, the rental rent. yes for my mom wow. for, for one year. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. She must I have paid been my so... our rent and then I uh, then I decided to uh, we decided to re relocate from where we stayed to an upper, you know, to upgrade ah, our our living standards. Yes. yes. You made all that happen. Yes. That's amazing. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. So when I came back, um yeah, so we moved. I paid my our rent and mm. then we moved. And then uh, I didn't go to Lake Victoria Sunset Badders for volunteering. So then we we started our own organization. I so met a friend. So you didn't return after New York. Well, I I, I I I was meant to return, but there are issues. You know, people don't want progress. Yeah. So maybe you went to the the state. They were like, why didn't I go? So they had a lot of you know. Yeah. Yeah, a lot ah, of issues. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I didn't I didn't go back. So yeah. then we started our an environmental conservation in Kisumu, not not in not at wildlife clubs. Yeah. Yeah, in Kisumu. Uh -huh. Yeah, so we did a lot. Uh, I, I have worked a lot in the lake region, uh, yeah, in environment stuff. In matters environment. Yes, uh -huh. yes. So I worked with um, with women and girls in the entire lake region, with the fisher folk, yeah, uh -huh. in the lake region, yeah. in, in Dunga Beach Village. Yes. In, the Dunga Beach Village in, is in Kisumu. Yes, yeah. the fish place. Yeah, the fish place. Uh -huh. Actually, that's where I have my hotel. Oh, oh. <laughs> yes. So my life cons <laughs> is all around what, what happened to me and my growing up. Yes. Yeah. So, um, so we started a, a, an environmental conservation group. Mm -hmm. You and who? Me and my friend, of, a friend of mine that I met at the Sunset Badders. My friend, that time, my friend got a scholarship to go study in the UK. So when he came back, he was like, we need to start an organization in, in the lake region. Yes. I mean, around the lake. Yes. Yeah, so we started, I mean, I was there mostly. Yeah. Um, as the nice. woman, because uh, yeah, because he used to work elsewhere, but I, I was the one in charge of that uh -huh. place. I was co-founding, running it, uh -huh. running it. Yeah. So what was the organization about? Yeah. So it, the organization w was also environmental. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but more towards entrepreneurship, env environmental entrepreneurship. Got it. Yeah. So more of more of promo I mean, more of encouraging people to invest in entrepreneurship. Yes. In terms of so when we, you you can conserve the environment, what happens then? Yeah, so mm -hmm. it was more of environmental entrepreneurship. Okay, yeah. so which year was this when you founded this organization? Well, so that was when I came back. Um, so that was in 2014? Yes. 2014. Okay. No, wait, wait, was it 2012? 2012, 2012 mm -hmm. 2013. 2012, 2013. Yeah. Yeah, but at that time now I had finished my... Management course. My management course yes. in, at Kenya Institute Management. Yes. So I wanted to upgrade myself. Uh -huh. Yeah. So when I was I was working at um, and at the NGO at the uh, at the environmental organization, mm -hmm. then I, I enrolled for uh, uh, a degree a degree course at at just Jaramogi Oginga Odinga University mm -hmm. <laughs> to mm -hmm. do my my degree. What degree in business business okay. administration? Okay. So business is all my life. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. So when I went to uh, I, I went to I, I was I was working and, and doing my studies. Yeah, 
it's because at, at uh, the environmental organization we used to do a lot of you know resource mobilize fundraise yeah. so we had some grants i had a, I had a thing for working with women because i was the only woman mm. yeah so I had, I had a thing with working with women and girls yeah so um so at that time i you, there's something about entrepreneurship. So you work in you, you work in a particular place, but you also have something to do with what, the, the skills that you have. Yes. So what we call entrepreneurship. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of women and girls they draw a lot of their their, their resources naturally. So they use the lake. They use the they use the papyrus. They use the hyacinth. They they use all the natural resources to make their to earn an, an income. A living, yes. Yeah. Yes. So I was like, do, I I really need to do something for the to use my skills that I learned from school yes. to do, do something for the women and girls. I like that. Yeah, so well, while I was still in the organization, I, my, I actually thought of starting my own organization. Ah. Yeah, so that's, that's how WISE came about. Aha. Yeah, so when I was still working in this organization, yes. um, I, ran, I ran a project. Yeah, uh -huh. I, uh, this project was called Smokeless Homes Initiative. Smokeless, Smokeless Home. Homes. Yeah. So smokeless homes is uh, is all about working with women and girls. I mean, and uh, enabling them to access solar lamps and improved improved cookstoves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So because so yeah so this actually informed uh, my growing up. So when I was growing growing up in Obunga and we had a a, a one um, we had a one bedroom house. Yes. Yeah, and then. Uh, also, um, there was there used to be this book called The Burdens. I don't know if you know it. The Burdens. Yeah, The uh -huh. Burdens. In pre was it in the primary school or in high in high school? Yeah, uh -huh. in high school. Yes. Yeah, in high school. So I mean, there, there was this story that that happens, and and then there's there's black suits in the what in the house mm. and stuff like that from the smoke. So that was my situation. <laughs> <laughs> so then I started. Oh, smokeless homes. Ah. I mean, that's what I was thinking, thinking about. Eh? Yes. Yeah. So I was like, because we sometimes uh, when we go to the for the field visit, yeah, uh, we would visit the the homes eh, in the, the homestead, mm. and they, we would get the women, the women volunteer their time, they cook for, for us, you know. But you'd see them struggle. They would look for firewood, you know, yeah. the three stores. Mm. But you could see the suits, the black suits yes. in the house. Yeah. So then I thought, what, what can I do for women, women and girls? Because these people are really struggling. Yeah. But this really re re reflect my situation back then. Yeah. You grew up in it. Yes. 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 So then, then, I, then my first my first project was smokeless homes uh -huh. project. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's that's where, uh, I mean, that's that's where I used to do solar lamps and cook stoves. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then, um, yeah. So, uh, so what what this is, entails is that we I used to we don't man, manufacture solar lamps, yeah, even in, even cook stoves, but we used to get them from the suppliers, the the solar lamps. But then uh, then we give to we, women groups around the lake, mm. women groups. But then they rent them out at a price that is lower than kerosene, ah. yeah, as well as the cook stoves. So they rent them out. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, because they can't buy upfront. Yes. Yeah, they had to pay small. They can't fee. afford just, it. Just, just, like M Copper. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So th that's my my first project. Okay. So before you move on to the next project, yeah, uh, we need to take a commercial break. Oh yeah. And then we'll be right back okay. with more of Caroline's story. Okay. Don't go too far. Okay. <laughs> Welcome back from the break. This is What's Your Story. We're here at the Akijia Premier Hotel and our conversation continues with Caroline Odera. So your first project with women yes. was a smokeless... Homes initiative. Uh -huh. Yes. So you succeeded in that. Yes, I succeeded. I succeeded in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I first, I found an, an opportunity to go and train myself. Oh, yeah, where? Yeah, in Nairobi. Uh huh. Yeah, at that time, there were, there was no much in Kisumu, so uh -huh. all the opportunities were in Nairobi. <laughs> yeah. So, but then I had to apply. It was all over on the internet, but I, I had, a, I had applied. So, what were you applying for exactly? It was an Akil 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 Dada Fellowship Program. Uh -huh. It's in Nairobi. Okay. They work with 
it, it is more, it, they work with women and girls. Yes. Yeah. What were you training in? It was all about monitoring, monitoring strategic yes. plan, yes. you know, pitching. So it's all everything ah. about organization. Yeah. That's nice. So yeah. how long was that for? It was one year. So one year you were in the city of no, Nairobi? It was in between Kisumu and Nairobi. Ah, yes. I, see. I used to go into Nairobi and Kisumu. Yes. Yeah. So how did that um, bring value now to your organization? To well, it, it kind of gave me a leapfrog. Mm. Yeah, I mm -hmm. mean, setting up because it was just a project, but I didn't know how to go about it. Yeah, so I learned a lot of things. Mm -hmm. But then uh, uh, at the end of it, they gave us a grant to start off something. Yeah, so I, I had to train for a year, but then they gave me a grant for one year to start off my project. That's wonderful. Yeah. And that's how you set off? Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. So how did you work then with the women here? Yeah, so for, yeah, so I used to work with women and groups, uh, women, women groups, you know, so in, mm. I mean, there are a lot of chamas. I, I don't know where yes, you come yes, from. Yes. There's, a, there's a lot of chamas in, even here in Kisumu. Mm. So I used to work with chamas a lot. Yeah. So then as time goes by, I, uh, then I thought, it's not about energy, energy alone. There are more issues to deal with, deal with in, in women and girls apart from just energy things. Okay. Yeah. So then I thought, I mean, then I thought around, um, so what other issues do women want us to, I mean, do women want us to, to work in, you know? So not just energy. So then uh, that time, I, I, I mean, I had, I had issues with my friend at mm -hmm. the organization. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, so... Um, I thought uh, about starting my own organization, not just a project, my, but my own organization mm -hmm. that works with women, women, women and girls. Mm -hmm. Just an holistic approach, just, just, just living alone energy, yes. but an holistic approach. So yeah. you left. Yeah, so, I, uh, so, uh, so at that time, I was actually, uh, I, I was actually um, trying to, I, I was actually trying to think of what I'm going to do next after mm -hmm. leaving this organization. Yeah. Yeah, because he used to, <laughs> we had we had a lot of some issues. He used to uh, he used to call me names bec uh, that I'm a stupid woman, but I, I uh, my uh, my uh, I used to say to myself that I'm wise. Yeah, that I'm wise. So that that name actually came from an, a name they used to call me, so from an is an insult mm -hmm. that I'm I'm a stupid woman. But I used to tell myself I am wise. wise. Yeah. So then fast forward, then I thought that then my organization is going to be called WISE. Ah. So that is how WISE came about. Wow. Yes. <laughs> so, but where did the insults come from? I mean, we had, we had issues. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. So thankfully you thought of how to now just separate in yes. peace. Yeah. And start your own. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So at that time I used to apply for a lot of programs. Okay. Yeah. So there was Mandela Washington, Washington mm. Fellowship program. Yeah, actually I applied for it three times when I was still at this organization. At that time I used to apply for it with the work that, the project that we do, and then I, I applied with Smokeless Homes. Mm -hmm. Then the th third time I applied with, with Wise Hub. Mm -hmm. That's when I got it. Wow, with yes. your own. Yes, so the timing was own. right. Yeah, I think, I think the timing was right. Yes. yes. Okay. Mm. So what other projects then have you done through Wise Hub? Through Wise, so, uh, so at Wise Hub, so WISE is now five years, yeah. So when I started, it was when we st when we started, it was like two years. We we had issues. We are still looking for funding. We are still, you know, I mean, it was just baby steps, you know. So um, so now it's five years five years old. Uh, we have an office, but we work with women and girls, not just in energy, but we work with women and girls. We empower them to engage in other alternative livelihood sources other than fishing. So because you know, so from my experience here working with women and girls, I observe that most women depend on, on fishing. They, uh, there is yes. over dependence on, on fishing yes. as the only source of livelihood. Mm. But no one was telling them at that time that, is, that there is other things that you can do other, other than fishing. Yeah, so that's, that's why I, I actually started WISE. So you opened WISE, uh, the name came from someone who used to disrespect you, insult you. Used to say that I'm stupid, you. yes. Yes. yes, and you said you're not. Yes, I am not. So you not, got yeah. the name of your company. Yes, lovely. Yeah, and then you went for started applying for all these grants. Yes, and you were at the Mandela Washington Fellowship. Yes. yes. So when I started my own organization, wise, so that's when I got the the fellowship program. Ah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So we went to interviews in Nairobi, and then I got accepted. So yeah, I went to 
it was a six month fellowship program in the States. Again? Yes, in the States. So <laughs> my life has only been in States. <laughs> yeah, but not a, not a busy state. Oh, actually, close by. So the, my first time was in New York. New York. New yeah, York. That's when you were thrust in the I deep know, end. I know. Yeah, yeah. Every, everyone is, seems so busy. I mean, that's. That, and life that's was been, super fast. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh -huh. yeah. And then, and then my, my, so the fellowship program, I, I, I went to New Jersey. That's not very far from New York. Yeah. It's a bit calmer. Yeah, mm. yeah. So you know what happens is they place they place you in different universities. Okay. Yeah. So I, I actually I got lucky. So I apply I applied under a business and 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 entrepreneurship track. Ah. Yeah. Ah. So they placed me in one of the best universities in the states. Wow. So at this time, what had happened to your degree enrollment at? Uh, I had University. finished. I had oh, actually finished. finished. Yes, oh, because nice. it was it was so my my college at Kim was two years, and then I did another two years in the university. So I had finished actually. Nice. Yes, yes, yes. Were you feeling at that time like your life is progressing? Yes, it was progressing. Yeah, yes. and it was looking good. Yes, it was. And you are also of course playing. I was determined. I was determined. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And your siblings are also getting very inspired. You know, by because you. I am the firstborn, so I mean, had to step ahead. Needed to give them yeah. something to yes. look up to. Yeah. I think it's amazing. <laughs> Even yeah. how you stepped out of this toxic environment yes. into building your own. Yes, PLSC. at that time, actually, I had moved from Obunga, then I went to different estates. So I keep on upgrading my life, our lifestyle yeah. as family. a family. And yes. how we know keep a care Yes. Una, you take your whole Everyone family. Everyone else, yes. That's what I like about <laughs> your story, by the way. Because <laughs> most people who want to our... Yeah was idea from far. Yes. You, you stayed there. Yes. Munuke Pamoja. Yeah. I love it. So yeah, so then I went to I went to uh, New Jersey for my fellowship program. I learned a lot during the fellowship. Yeah, then I went for PD uh, pro, uh, uh, professional development experience, more of like an intern an internship program. Yeah. With who? Uh, in the states, still yes. So after the fellowship, after the fellowship, and then you identify one of the women organizations ah. to work with. So I did like a three month internship. So then I came back after nine, ten months. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yeah. So when I when I came back, so what I learned from the whole during the fellowship period is that I I I mean I saw something that that was was interesting for me. The, the university where we are, yeah. Rutgers University, mm -hmm. how, the, how did they work with the universities around? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was more of like um, uh, the, the researchers, you know how you do researches in, in school and the recommendations? Here they just stay on the shelves. Mm -hmm. But what happened then after, after that? Yeah. So that was something really beautiful. Mm. Yeah, because I mean, so I, I saw how, how they operate, they operated, yeah. how they take their, their recommendations, and then how some, uh, someone else come, I mean, comes and does a lot of mm. uh, promoting businesses yes. and promoting investment. So they also introduced uh, issues of venture capital financing because venture capital fund is, is so big in, in the US. Yes. So I saw how it worked. Then I thought I, I thought about Kisumu where I used to come from. Yeah. So then when I came back, then my co founder mm -hmm. uh, where I work I work at also on my side hustle, uh, Winam Capital. Uh -huh. That's how Winam Capital was born. Uh huh. Yes. So what is Winam Capital about? So Winam Capital works with Enter entrepreneurs and investors in mm -hmm. Kisumu, mm -hmm. in the in the lake region. Mm -hmm. So in the lake region, we're talking about 14 counties of the lake. Yes. So when you say you work with them, what exactly goes into that? Yeah. So we actually have an incubation space. Yeah. So we nurture businesses to become sustainable businesses. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And how many uh, investors are you working with now? Well, so a lot of, uh, so we actually, you know, all of my co-founders co come from Kisumu, yeah? So they're all men. I'm mm. the only girl again. again yes, I'm the Your only girl. Your life is destined yes. <laughs> to uh, be the only girl They're all room. men. So I have two Philips. <laughs> 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 yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, so, you know, growing up in Kisumu, there are not many opportunities uh, in, as, as far as investments are concerned, you know? A lot of people, when growing up, I see a lot of people going back to Nairobi. Yes. Yeah, to search for employment, but there's no, nothing that comes, comes back. back here. So like, what can we do for Kisumu? Because I have seen this work well in, in the States. Yes. But what, what can we do in Kisumu? Yeah. Yeah, but at that time, my co-founder was actually thinking about the same thing. So he was looking for someone he can work with, someone who can buy his idea. 
Yeah, so he was actually, he was my friend on Facebook. So before I came, before I came back from the US, he was just uh, stalking me on Facebook, okay. you know? So when I came back, he requested that we have a cup of, uh, a cup, a cup of tea yes. in Kisumu. Uh -huh. Yeah, so it, it told me about the vision, what, we, what he has, and then, and then I bought into it, yeah? Then we went ahead and, and uh, at that time it was a, a different name. But, but when we met, we actually registered Winam Capital. Okay. Yes. Does Winam have any meaning? Winam, so yeah, so Winam is a Lu name. Mm -hmm. So it means on top of the lake. Ah. So this area is called the Winam Gulf. Yeah. Uh -huh. So it's like Nam is a Lu name for the lake. Uh -huh. And then we is the on top. So these are on top, on of, top the of the lake. lake. Yeah. Nice. So there are so many Winams in Kisumu. So if you come to Kisumu, there are Winam chemists, there's Winam. So everything is Winam. Ah. Yeah. So we, we, regist we registered it as Winam Capital, but right now uh, we have actually, we have, because there's a lot of Winam, so now it's rebranded, <laughs> we launch. Okay. Yeah, so it's Winam, we, la we launch Winam, but launching a place for launching yes, businesses. Yes, so we launch Capital. Yeah, so we have, we, we launch. Ah. It's a hub, yeah. Oh, we launch hub. Yeah. Oh, I like it. Yes. So what successes have you seen from that endeavor? Yeah, so we actually, so when, so when I came back in 2017 and then we registered the company in 2018, so Winam Capital is uh, like three years old now, it's still a startup. We are basically still a startup. Yes, <laughs> yeah. it's true. But we work with a lot of, you know, people know us as, as you know, those business guys. Yes. So people see me as business and yes. they see me as women. Yes, <laughs> and women too, because yes. of wives. Yes, yeah. yeah, so I mean we have done a lot quite a number of things uh -huh. yeah uh, in Kisumu yeah because at, I mean no one else, else was doing the same thing that we are doing mm. yeah so we did a lot of business meetings uh, we actually do do a show called business Fridays okay yeah that we talk to different entrepreneurs in Kisumu okay yeah where do you do the show we do we do I mean so first of all we didn't have you know infrastructure mm. so we started i mean and thanks to facebook we did facebook live oh, love it. Love <laughs> we did it. a lot of facebook live yes. chats you know yes. and then we did a, and then uh, we because we needed some quality you know we because in the live we don't have quality yeah you know? <laughs> i mean it's what so, you're using yes, yes yeah so because we wanted some quality we, we we then got someone else to work with so we rec uh -huh. we record we we had to record the version yes. before we air it yeah so it's called business fridays business fridays and live chats on Facebook? Yes, on Facebook. Okay, what's the Facebook page? It, it's called Business Live Chats and fa uh, Business Live Chats, <laughs> uh, Business Fridays and Live Chats, uh -huh. but also we have a Facebook page for Winam Capital. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, mm. pretty cool. Man, yeah. your life has been something <laughs> from the slums yes. to trainings in such high institutions. Yeah. Then an incident happened to you mm. uh, last year. Yes. You want to talk about it? Yes. <laughs> so last year, that was in August, yeah? Just the other day. Just the other day. Yeah, yeah I mean, time flies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the devil is so bad. You know, it, it cuts across your strength. Mm. I mean, it comes across your, your strength, where your strength lies. Mm. So at Winam Capital, I'm in charge of SME support and uh, partnerships. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in terms of partnerships, you talk a lot. You're mm. always the one talking to people. Yes. Yeah. So last year in in uh, August, um, I got a mi mild stroke. A stroke. A stroke. Yeah. At 34. Yes. Wow. Yeah. But I had all the tests. They said there's nothing that caused it. What yeah. were you feeling before you I went mean, to hospital? Well, I think so. I don't know. There were many things that were running across my mind. Yeah. So I think it was just stress level okay. because I I did all the tests, but there was nothing that was really mm, close yeah. to it. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, so last year, so then I had, I, I was, I, I couldn't speak for like a month. Yeah. It impaired your speech. Yes, so I couldn't speak for like a month. So I, I used to stomach, I used to struggle speaking. You know, even right now my speech is a little bit distorted. It's not But the same. at least you can, you can, you yeah, can. Yeah, I can't really yes. understand. One can't even say you had one. Oh yeah, really? But yeah. I, but it's not myself. I, I'm not feeling like I used to. This is how I used to be before. Oh okay. Oh yeah, but yeah, because I used to be chatty and you know because I used yeah. to do shows like this. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, so, but it, but it, it's coming up. Yeah. Yeah. So it's how coming how back. long did your so you went you were diagnosed with stroke? So what yes. did that feel like? What does stroke feel like? Yeah, thank God I, I I wasn't paralyzed because I'm told people people who have stroke get paralyzed, you know, and something. But I, I had a dislocation from my mouth. Yeah, because I had I I used to go, I had to go for physiotherapy. 
It moved? Yes, it moved. Wow. Yes. But was that scary? It was so scary. Even for my kids, it yeah. was so scary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they couldn't even speak to me. So how long did that uh, recovery period take? Well, uh, it was actually a short period. So I was sick for like two months. Yeah. After, uh, so until maybe um, October, there, November there about. Because in November we have a conference, so I was sick for like two months. You needed to get better for your conference. For, for my conference, <laughs> but I couldn't actually speak because... <laughs> yeah, the yeah, speech was affected. Yeah, yes, yes. But I, I, I could at least do some things, meet some few, few people, mm. you know, do one, one mm. or two things, yeah. And how are you feeling now? Right now I'm feeling, I'm feeling well. Yeah. I thank God, yeah. No, are you on medication? Well, I, I, I finished actually. Okay. Yes, I finished. Right now I'm not doing, I'm, I finished my, my physiotherapy, yeah. I finished my medication. Yeah. So right now I'm, I'm well. So I'm, I'm just trying to manage, I'm just trying to manage my, my sort of work because I did so much, you know, there's business, there's Winam Capital, there's WISE. You know, you're it's a mom. Your you're yes. a mom. You're, you're, a you're someone's. Yeah, you're a someone's girlfriend. Oh, oh. You're someone's. <laughs> I don't know. So you have a yeah. lot of things going, going on to on. your life. Yeah. So how did your life change? Well, since then, <laughs> it has changed a lot. So right now, I am not socially as I used to be before. Mm. Yeah, because I had to let some things go. What did you drop? <laughs> <laughs> some friends. Ah, okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, and I don't really, I don't really take in a lot of things that that gives, gives me stress. Right. Yeah. So I'm trying to balance it out. Cleaning out your yes, space. Yeah, and yes. Yes. So right living. now I don't do much of work like before. Yeah. Yeah. Because like like, uh, like before I got sick, we used to do a lot in terms of Winam Capital because you know it's still a startup. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. we used to run around, do a lot of interviews. Yes. You know, meet a lot of partners, look yes. for investors. So there are a lot of things. But at the same time, you have to look for funds to run your organization which is wise but at the same time some people are missing you at the business stuff so I had a lot of stress going on, going on in my life that time yeah so right now I'm, I'm balancing but you still done way too much yes. at such a young age yeah oh really yes I don't think so no really <laughs> and maybe maybe this mini stroke had to happen to mm. slow you down in the sense of uh, it's okay, go at your pace. Yes. Oh, yeah, I think, I think so, yeah. Yeah, like yeah. just pace yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, actually, yes, you're right. Yeah, because, <laughs> yeah, so last, so, uh, so some t at some point last year yeah. also, I got accepted to the London economic school school of economics oh, yes school of economics uh, last year so i couldn't go now because we have the pandemic but also the mo the most part of it is because i, I couldn't I, I was sick the and, yeah, and the speech yes. yes i had to defy it to i mean maybe next maybe year so next year maybe next year because now i had to look for money also so you are, you are working your way up through being a scholar yes 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 Hi. Yeah, and it's business, nothing else. <laughs> it's business and entrepreneurship. Yeah, nothing else. So they had already accepted you. Yes, into yes. That prestigious school. Yes, yes. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> that is amazing. Thank you. Well yeah. done. So yeah. your mom takes care of your kids when you travel? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's that's a good thing because I mean, and it's a good thing that I had kids at a younger age, you know, because now I had a, I have a lot of a lot of time to do most of the things that I wanted to yes. do. Yeah. And you can, so it's a good thing to have kids at a at, at a young age. age. Yes. Mm -hmm. I appreciated <laughs> that. Yeah. <laughs> I ended that that moment. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's so good to know. Yeah. Wow, your story is beautiful. Yeah. Thank so, you. So, uh, what next for your organizations? For why is yeah, Especially well, for wise. a lot is happening, by the way. Okay. So we have, um, so this year, actually, this year, when COVID started, we slowed, slowed down. Yeah, because Every we couldn't do much. Yeah. Actually, yeah. yeah, but actually, we are making our way. We are coming back. So people should expect many things uh, cap coming uh -huh. for, Win for Winam Capital. Yes. Um, uh, currently, we launch, not Winam Capital. Yes. Yeah, but I mean, a lot is happening at WISE because uh, right now we have a lot of partners we are working with. Yeah. Yeah, for okay. women and girls. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right now, we are actually running an incubation program for, for ecotourism. Yeah, mm. you know? So, ecotourism is not a space where, where there's a lot of women. This is actually, it actually comes from my experience, you know, having done tour guiding, bird washing, all the stuff. Yes. So, I didn't see a lot of women in this space. Yes. So, it's something that I want to open up for women to engage wow. in. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, this okay. year we actually, we want to, we want to get more women to 
have investable business, ecotourism business mm. in this space. Mm. Yeah, because you know Kisumu is next to the lake. Yeah. You know, the yeah. second largest freshwater lake. So what are people doing about it? Mm. Yeah. So what, what other opportunities can women engage in other than fish, you know? Using what resources they have. What resources can we have? Yes. Yeah. So everything revolves around my upbringing, my, you know, talk about agribusiness. We have a hotel doing fish and value addition. Talk about ecotourism. That's where I want my women to have investable business, you know, and talk about what? Ecotourism and green energy. They're still doing a lot of green energy business. Mm -hmm. eh? Yeah, so everything revolves around, you know, my space. Your passion, my your background. Yes. It's amazing how everything just works yeah, together yes. for you. It is amazing. <laughs> yeah. So and you still take care of your siblings. Sorry? You still take care of your siblings. Oh yeah, yeah. No, right now they are all grown. Oh they're all grown. Oh yeah. yeah. They're, Some they're are even married. <laughs> well, one is married. <laughs> yeah, but they're all grown now. Oh wonderful. actually I actually I actually took them to school. Yes. Yes. Actually so so when I was growing up after my high school I, and I got some a bit of money, then I had to pay for them for their schooling, all of them. So they must really look yes, up to you, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. I yes, love it. Yes. Gosh, Caroline, you have a beautiful story. <laughs> Thank you so much. I can only wish you the best going forward. Thank you. And keep us posted on your awards, Thank your you. many awards that are coming. Oh, really, that are still coming. Yes. Those, those are, I mean, I, I still expect more. Yes. Because those are, those are not many awards, but I, I those still expect. Those are very expect... many. Most people don't have even one. Really? What do you mean? It's not a normal <laughs> oh, thing. Oh, well, it's what a privilege, yes. What do you mean, really? But I, I, I still expect to, to I mean, yeah, to get, get more. Because the work yes. you're doing is uh, noble and it's yes. not for just for you, mm. but it also impacts the community. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that, that is very true impact. Yes. Yes. That's beautiful. Yeah. So words to the wise, words to the young people like you uh, who need <laughs> to break through in whichever areas of life. Well, and that's where you tell them. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of things. You know, I train so many people in yes. Kisumu. I mean, I mean, right now they may be watching me, but I've trained so many people. Yeah, yeah, the young ones, the women and girls, and I have done a lot of judging and pitching. You know, when mm. I was still yes, my my when I was still at peak. Eh? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. So what I would want to tell uh, the young people is they need a lot of patience oh. you know i think we they need a lot of patience mm -hmm. we, everything doesn't come you know all, all at once you need some patience and you, and you need some consistency in what you do you know so me i started as a business person i'm still doing business yeah so you need a lot of patience and consistency but also because you came from a poor background you can decide to choose your emotions or progress you know you can decide to choose to, to wind around your emotions and say you're poor, you know, yeah, yeah? but you can choose to progress. Me, I choose progress and, and that this is where I am, yeah. Mm. And then you use time wisely. Uh. Yeah, right now people, are, uh, most young people don't know how to use their time wisely. Yeah, they have a lot of time. They spend most of the time in social media, spreading hate, doing, spreading rumors. But now what do you do with the, your time wisely? Do you take your time on social media to educate some people or to inspire some people? Yeah. 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 So use your time wisely and become. Success is just to become something. Yeah. You know, you, you, can't become, you, you can't become a success, you know, like right now, but it's something that it's a, it's a progress. Yeah. It's a progress. So you need to spend your time wisely and become a success. Love it. Yeah. And how can they reach you if they need to reach you? Oh, yeah. So personally, Caroline, Caroline Odera. Carol, Carol Odera at gmail.com and then for Wise is Carol at Wise-Kenya.org and then for Winam Capital is Carol at Winamcapital.co.ke. I'm Carol Odera on all my social media platforms. Carol Odera. Yeah, everything. Okay. Consistency. That's where young people, you know, miss it. You miss it. Yeah. yeah. So you ca I can't say my name is someone else and then my CV is something yeah. else. So my name is just Caroline Odera on all social media yeah. platforms. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Carol, thank you so much for coming today. Thank you today. so much. Yeah. You have inspired us. Yeah. More awards are coming. Mm. You cannot afford to yeah. be shy yeah. uh, in celebrating yourself. <laughs> Yes. Okay, when they come next or yeah. when you have another interview yeah. like this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I wish you God's best. Thank you. In your next step. Thank you very much. You're most and thanks welcome. for having me. You're most welcome. Thank you. And to you watching, thank you also for making the time today on What's Your Story. So until next week, God bless you.
Acacia Premier Hotel provides fully serviced boardroom facilities such as catering for meetings, providing free high-speed wireless internet to video conferencing and state-of-the-art audio-visual equipment with an adjacent private meeting room and business center that ensure all your business needs are met. Are you planning for a memorable event, meeting, training or conference? Acacia Premier Hotel offers extensive meeting and event facilities equipped with the latest system and materials including LCD projector, paper flip charts, CD, DVD player, faster internet access, whiteboards and markers, inbuilt PA system and automatic drop-down projector screens. The Grand Ballroom has a capacity of 600 packs and can break into smaller meeting rooms with a spacious breakout area for buffet setups, cocktails and healthy breaks. There is also an exquisite boardroom of 12 packs and a lounge.